Have you ever wondered how signal travels across a recording studio? So how do we get from one room to another? How does the signal get dispatched between the analog domain and the digital domain? How can we communicate with artists on the other side of the glass? Well, everything happens because of a patch bay. Now the patch bay is the brain of your recording studio. It is set it up in a way that would allow you to grab any existing connected output or input in the other room and through patch cords or bantam you're going to be able to grab that source and send it to a predefined destination. The patch bay that are generally used in professional recording studio are called tiny telephone, which allow you to have up to 48 patch points. There are other type of patch bays, which are quarter inch patch bay, which are going to give you just half of the potentiality and the capability that uh, a tiny telephone patch bay does. Now to connect one element to another through a patch bay, we use this more Bantam cable. The way patch bay works is pretty straightforward. There are two rows with two holes. The top row is always your output. The bottom row is always your input. So in a way to kind of like think source to destination, this is what the little bantam are going to help us with. Connecting a source to a destination. Now, of course, the more you use patch base, the more you're going to end it up with this huge mass of spaghetti ball that is nonetheless different type of connection that can vary from project to project. Now, whatever you see right now is the front of a patch bay. In the back of the patch bay, we have a ginormous speak-on cable containing a lot of different cables that connect each single room and each single outboard gear in our studio that are being soldered behind the patch bay. So if we have to create a sort of like bi-dimensional vision, the back of the patch bay is what receives all the input from, let's say, microphone inputs from the live room, uh, line input. The front, instead, is your output. Now, the output of a patch bay can be found in the top row. And so our goal is how to connect output to input. Now, there are a few different type of patch bay, which I'm going to go ahead and explain how they work. So bear with me and enjoy the crazy ride of patch bay. Patch bays are possible the brain and most important element of your studio. Through the patch bay, you can get access to any outboard, input, microphone level, and as well DAW that you have at your disposal within your recording studio. Now, in order for you to understand how to work with patch bay, you have to first grasp how to read patch bays. Now, over here, in Studio A, we have seven patch bays. Patch bays can be counted from top to bottom as one patch. So I'm going to give you a little run through of the way we have set it up our patch bay. Now on the first patch bay, output over input, we have on the top row the outputs that come from the microphone inputs from the live rooms, which are normal with the microphone inputs of our SSL board. The second patch bay, again output over input, is characterized by our DAW output. The outputs are referred to the hardware outputs that are connected to our A to D, D to A converters in the machine room. And right underneath the input is the SSL line input. The third patch bay, once again output over input, you can find here the sense and the return of the SSL hardware insert. So on the channel insert of the SSL, once you press that channel, the output can be found on this third patch bay and the return onto the same channel can be found in the row below. The fourth patch bay is characterized by a little bit of a miscellaneous thing. As a matter of fact, on the top row, you can find a direct output as well as the output of different preamplifiers. 
such as the Focusrite 3124 or the Neve 5024. In the bottom row instead you can find the DAW input. Again, DAW inputs refer to Pro Tools hardware inputs which are referred to the Pro Tools HD cards I.O. which is in the machine room. That means that we can take a signal out of our Pro Tools software, send it somewhere and then take it back in. The fifth patch bay it's a little bit of a miscellaneous as well. Here you can find a routing matrix to our surround system as well as our record in and out from our console as well as the mix out that takes the mix out of our SSL console to then being printed back into Pro Tools as well as the mix insert. Still in this patch bay, in the bottom row you have access to the input of our Avium system in the bottom row and in the top row you have again the sends to our different queues. Moving forward to our sixth patch bay again top to bottom row this is an open patch bay and you can find different configuration from our surround system to our talkback in the bottom row to as well different output to input from our different reverb units. The seventh patch bay again here it's where you're gonna find the majority of the outboard connections. As a matter of fact it's a little bit of miscellaneous as you can find preamplifiers and as well compressors and different types of equalizer outboards that you can connect throughout your work. Each single patch bay is characterized by two rows that determines the output and the input. Generally patch bay have always output over input. So in 9 times out of 10, the top row of any patch bay is outputting a signal and the bottom row is inputting. So we have the output over the input. Let's go ahead and analyze briefly the different type of patch bays and their behavior with signals. Now, taking a look at the front panel of a patch bay, we generally have two different rows. The top row represents the output, whereas the bottom row represents the input. So generally patch bays are characterized by output over input. Taking a look at a patch bay sideways, now I want to show you what goes underneath the layers and behind the front panel of a patch bay. So back to front, we're going to have our input incoming from a specific place. In this case, we have our input coming from our live room. That means that in the front, top row, we're going to have the output from the live room. The bottom row characterized an input. In this case, in this example, I have something called microphone channel input, which then will feed, in this case, one of our microphone inputs from our board. Now, in order to understand how to work with patch bay, we need to clarify the different type of patch bays that you might find in a studio and they are classified in three different categories. Before moving forward, this is a very simple representation of how a patch bay would look like, of course, the front panel. So over here we have 14 channels, top to bottom, output over input, whereas the top channel represents, you know, from channel 1 to 6, a microphone input from our live room, and right at the bottom we have our console microphone input. Moving along, we have our DAW output or our Pro Tools HD loop through output. And right at the bottom we have our SSL console, but in this case the line input. To conclude, we have our insert sends in the top and insert returns at the bottom. Of course, this is just an example, but patch base can be heavily customized upon your needs. Now, in a studio, we generally deal with three different types of patch bays. The first type of patch bay is known to be through or open. Now, a through or open patch bay is generally used to connect outboard gear, compressors, equalizers, effects, or different types of preamplifiers. Now, the characteristic of an open and through patch bay is that there is no connection from top to bottom row. In other words, in order for you to complete a normalization output over input, you need to use a Bantam cord or a patch cord. 
In other words, again, the top row does not communicate with the bottom row unless you make that connection. Let's say we want to plug in a compressor within our signal path. So from our SSL, we're going to dial in the insert and take the output from our insert send from our patch bay. Now I want to insert an 1176 within our path. So here what you want to do. To complete a normalization, you need to go through two steps. The first step would be to connect the output of your channel with the input of your compressor in this case. So in this case, I'm taking the output from a given channel from the SSL that is connected through the patch bay and I'll send it to the input of my compressor of my 1176 bottom row. Now the signal is feeding the compressor and we're just halfway through the end of the game. Now we have to take that signal that has been compressed back into our SSL. So what you're going to do is go to the top row of the outboard patch bay plug a bantam and take the output of the compressor and then patch that compressor back in into a channel insert return of the patch bay. So in this case we have completed a normalization top to bottom of a through open patch bay. So we're taking the output, sending it into the input of an outboard gear, taking the output of the outboard gear, sending it back in into our console. This completes a full normalization. Taking a look at the front panel, this is how it would look like. You would go, for instance, in this example from the channel insert send, taking the output, so top row, connecting it with the bottom row, so the input of one of our outboard gear. In this case, I'm going to go on where it says UA76, which is input 41. So now the signal is inside the compressor. Top row is the output of that compressor. So I will take the output of the compressor and sending that back in into the same corresponding channel insert return of our SSL. This as far goes for open or through patch bays. The second type of patch bay it's known to be normal or fully normal. Now in this case top to bottom it's connected so there has been a connection that happens behind the front plate that allows the connection top to bottom output over input to happens no matter what. Generally this type of connection is used to connect tie lines to SSL or to different type of board microphone inputs. In this case this will simplify the number of cabling that you have to imply to make different connections. So on a normal type of base patch bay there's no need, at least for now, to use any Bantam to complete a normalization or a connection top to bottom. So this is what would happen. We will have our tie line that is connected to a precise input of our patch bay and the output of our patch bay is connected or normaled to the input of one of our channel of our board sequentially. Now there are different ways to use a normal patch bay. As a matter of fact, if I do not use any Bantam cords, top to bottom stays connected. So in this example over here, I have live room 1234, which is normal with SSL channel mic input 1234, so on and so forth. Now, if I'll plug either in the top row or bottom row a Bantam, this will cause the normalization to be broken. In other words, there's not going to be any more normalization output over input and have transformed a fully normal patch bay into an open or through patch bay. Now whether if I plug a Bantam in the bottom row just simply break the normalization top to bottom, I might want to use a Bantam in the top row because perhaps I want to just change the signal path of my channel. An example could be breaking a normalization from live room to a SSL mic input. Why? Well maybe we want to use a different preamplifiers that give us different tone characteristics and coloration to our signal. So let's say instead of using our board inline microphone input or SSL, I want to use a Neve 5024. So in this case you never want to use two preamplifier in sequence. 
So the first thing you want to do is plug in a Bantam in the top row, break the normalization top to bottom, and in this case I'm taking the output from the live room and sending it back into the input of our external preamplifier. Now again, this external preamplifier it's going to be the output that will dictate the actual incoming level that will feed my Pro Tools or tape machine. So now that the signal is inside our preamplifier, the last thing we want to do is to take the signal output from the channel of the preamplifier and sending it back in into our board. But in this case, we want to make sure to flip the incoming signal level on the board from microphone to line because again, the signal will be preamplified by the external pre and not from the onboard pre. This is what would happen in the front plate. In this case, I would go live room, either one, two, three, four, take that output, sending it where it says Neve 5024 in, I will choose one of the three input. Then I will go where it says Neve 20. Neve 5024 output, which is right now it's on a different patch bay, and we're going to show later on why. And send them back in through our patch bay on our SSL channel line input. This would complete a full normalization in case we want to vary the signal path and signal flow of a normal patch bay. The last type of patch bay we have in our studio is known to be half normal. Now, half normal, as the word implies, has already a normalization happening output over input, top to bottom. Now, the characteristic of a half normal is that in this case, we have two different types of signals. As a matter of fact, the half normal patch bait splits the signal. So I can have the same signal going from top to bottom and be normal from top to bottom to a specific channel on our board. And at the same time, I can take the output only of the top row and sending it elsewhere. Now, by using a Bantam in the top row, this will allow me to actually split the signal. So I can work simultaneously, let's say, with a direct signal and with a process signal. Whereas, by plugging a Bantam in the bottom row, we'll break the normalization top to bottom, making this half normal patch bay being a completely open or through patch bay. When do we use it? Well, let's say right now I have a case where I have a vocal and I want to keep my vocals, let's say on channel 23, normal with channel line input 12 of my console. But at the same time, I want to apply some parallel processing, whether it's a parallel compression or an effect. So I can take the output from channel 23 and sending into the input of our PCM96 reverb. So remember, top to bottom is still normal. So 23, it's normal with channel 12, line input of our SSL. Now in parallel, I can take a copy of that, sending it to a processor, take the output of that processor, and sending it back in into a different channel line input of our SSL. So we could use simultaneously with a signal that has reverb, and with a signal that is dry. And this is how the three different patch bays work. Now I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth and explain exactly how the patch bays we have in Studio A work. The great thing about patch bays is that they are fully customizable. That means that, of course, in the back, there are ways to solder cable, or sometimes they have little switch, that would allow you to let the patch bay be customize upon your needs. There are three different types of patch bays which are as well present in this patch base line that we have in Studio A. And they are normal, half normal, and open or through. I'm going to go ahead and explain how different patch bay behaves. But before I do so, I'm going to go ahead and give you an overview of how generally patch bay are structured. In many cases, the first patch bay, patch bay 1, is representing at the top row all the outputs that come from the live room. 
In other words, from the live room, we have our tie line, which indicates different microphone inputs. And the same number that correspond to the microphone input in the live room can be found on the top row of the first patch bay. And this is generally how 90% of patch bay are patched inside professional recording studios. Now here we have different live rooms at different booths. So it's crucial for you to really read from where the signal is coming from. Now from channel 1 to channel 12 we're taking signal from the main live room as well as 17, 18, 19 and 20. So we have three different tie lines, actually four different tie lines in the live room. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 17, 18, 19, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28. So this four group of patch pay correspond to the four tie lines we have in Studio A live room. And again, we have so many tie lines because the room is so big that you might need an input, microphone input, close to you and you don't want to go all over the other side of the studio. Next to it, we have again the mic output from the patch bay of our drum room. So 33, 34, 35, 36. Output from the Foley room and ADR room. Now in this other side of the patch bay, we keep having other outputs from the live room that belong to different tie lines and as well some live room line input. Let's say you're recording directly a keyboard or a bass. The way this patch bass structure is that since we had way more tie line that inputs on our console, only exceptionally for this patch bay, we found ourselves as well having some other outputs from our drum room down here. So the row below on the second half of the patch bay, it's still representing tie lines output from the live room, whether it's the drum room, Foley room, ADR. Now in this last section over here, as I was telling you before, we have our line output. Let's move back to the first part of our patch bay. Now right below the output of each single microphone, there is an input, and the input corresponds to our board, our SSL channel mic input. Our SSL AWS has 24 analog channel, which give us the ability to record 24 tracks simultaneously. So the color coding is yellow and goes from 1 to 24. Generally speaking, the patch base that connects live room to our console are known to be normal. That means that inside the actual circuitry of this patch bay, there is already a connection that is made from top to bottom. This entails that if we do not do nothing and we plug a microphone in the live room in input one, that same exact microphone will actually come right at channel one of our board. The same things applies for, let's say, channel 12. Now here we have to pay attention. Channel 12, in this case, it's normal with channel 8 on our SSL board. So if we plug something on channel 12, that element will pop up on channel 8. But let's say, for instance, we don't want channel 12 being on channel 8 on our SSL board. So there are ways to break what is known to be the normalization. And that is by using a Bantam cable or TNT cable. In this case, through my Bantam over here, I could break the normalization and take the signal that comes from output 12. And right now the signal is in my end. I can decide to do whatever I want with it. And right now I want to simply put the microphone signal that's coming from my client 12 into another channel of my SSL. Let's say, again, 12. So I'm going to go on channel 12 
and I've completed my normalization, top to bottom. Right now, by inserting a Bantam on my top row, the microphone output, I have broken the normalization. And right now I can do whatever I want with the signal. I can send it straight into my console. As well, I could decide to send it into another piece of gear, let's say a different preamplifier. We can go into our Neve. And right now the signal is going into my Neve. Moving down below, patch bay number two. Patch bay number two features a patch bay that is known to be half normal or semi normal. That means that top to bottom are connected inside the patch bay. But if I plug a bantam on the top row, I am not breaking the normalization as it happens for my first patch bay. But in this case, I am splitting the signal. So top to bottom are still connected. Plus I have a copy of the signal and I can send this copy anywhere I want. Now to break the normalization between a half normal patch bay, you need to cover the input of that bottom patch bay. In this case, I have broken the normalization and I've made this patch bay becoming a through or an open patch bay. Which brings me to our third patch bay. Which is the channel insert sends, left, right, and channel insert returns. The channel insert refers to the insert patch point that you can find on the SSL. So let's say in the EQ section we feel like inserting an external compressor or another type of equalizer or any other output gear. This is where we're going to go get our signal. Let's say on channel 8 I want to insert a compressor. Generally our compressor are situated in the last two patch bays. So I could engage my insert button. Now the signal is going from the SSL into my patch bay, which is open. There is no connection whatsoever between the top line and the bottom line of uh, a true patch bay or open patch bay. So in order to create a connection, we have to create a normalization that can only happen through bantams. And here is when different colors comes very handy. I generally use the red color for signals that are meant to be sent somewhere. So this is my send and the black color, it's my return. Now you might wonder, you're just crazy. Why would you want to have different colors? So when this patch bay is going to go from being empty, nice and pretty to be a spaghetti meatball, you might want to rethink where is the problem that might occur within your connections. So at least two colors are going to help me a lot in order to discern if the problem is coming from a send or a return. And I can always have an eyeball where the problem might be. I'm going to tell you even more. On this patch bay here where we have the talkback, as we have previously discussed, I generally use a color that I never used. So I know that this blue patch cord always corresponds to my talkback. So it's easy for me to spot where the talkback is feeding my IVM systems. Going back to our open patch bay, as we said, let's pretend we want to insert a compressor on channel 8. So I'm going to go on channel 8, assuming that my track is mono and is not stereo, because as a matter of fact here we have double of each number, because as I told you before, the SSL has the ability to transform one mono track into stereo. But let's pretend we're using only a mono track. So channel 8 is sending through what? Let's say sending through my distressors. So right now the signal is within my distressors. Now what I have to do? Well, I have to take the signal back into my board. So I'm going to go on distressor 
out back into channel 8 and I've completed a full round trip of normalization now the insert from our channel insert from our SSL our hardware insert and generally this patch is always open or through because again this might vary between mix to recording session so you don't want to normalize the output with the input you just want to leave it as free as possible as well as this last few patch bays now this last patch bay features a lot of our external preamplifiers because maybe we don't want to use SSL pre's it features a lot of our outboard gears our compressors our external EQ and effects and so we want to be able to constantly be free to move our patch cords as ever we want moving forward the fourth patch bay is a mixture of everything so there are some similarities between patch number four and patch number two as a matter of fact patch number two has a dull output and these are the actual hardware insert in Pro Tools that are strictly connected to the machine room to our converters as a matter of fact we could actually insert an analog patch point within our track inside Pro Tools send it elsewhere and reinsert that within our own signal flow down below here we have our SSL channel line input so you may wonder hold on a second what is the difference between the line input and the mic input well first and foremost the names two different names but generally what we want to do is to engage the line input whenever we want to use a different mic pre than the SSL mic pre as a matter of fact this first 24 mic pre's corresponds to the 24 SSL mic pre but maybe the coloration of that microphone preamplifier is not what we're after and perhaps we want to work with an API a TG2 a Grace pre a Millennia an Eve so how do we do this well in that case what you want to do is as usual taking a signal out of whatever you have inserted that microphone from the lab room let's say channel 19 so I broke the normalization top to bottom so into my SSL on channel 11 I'm not gonna have anything so right now I can decide to do whatever I want and let's say I want to send my microphone in through my API 3124 so I'm gonna go into channel 1 of my API and now the signal is going from my live room to my API now what is that I have to do well I have to take my signal and bring it back into my console so I'm gonna go and search because the bottom row is always input so I have to figure it out where is the output and is on patch number four the patch we were analyzing before so the patch number four is a sort of like hybrid it contains direct outputs few preamplifiers output and down below our DAW input so the input that will be connected inside Pro Tools let's finish up this normalization I'm gonna go into where it says API 1 and instead of plugging this cable into channel mic input we're gonna be flipping the input level of our SSL from mic to line and at this point I'm gonna go into channel 11 line input so that right now my levels are going to be dictated by whatever I'm going to do on the external preamplifier let's talk for a minute about the dull input and dull output again these two patch bays are half normal and half normal both of them they are half normal that means that top to bottom is connected in some sort of way 
the output corresponds to the what Pro Tools calls hardware loop through. That means that I can take from the insert inside Pro Tools a track. Let's say I could choose track 16 or output 16. And again, I can send this to my favorite piece of gear. Let's say an 1176, which is down here. So now my track from Pro Tools is going inside my 1176. And then I always have to complete a full round trip. The output of the 1176 is just on top. Send it back into where? Pro Tools channel 16. And I've completed my normalization. Now, since I'm using a DAW input output connection, though we're still in the hardware relay because we're using our converters in order to output the signal and taking it back, I don't want the signal to be split on channel 16 and having a portion of the signal is split it on channel 8. So as I told you before, you grab a Bantam and you break the normalization. doesn't even need to complete a full normalization. You can leave it like that. Moving forward, on our fifth patch bay, we have a couple of very interesting things to analyze. Starting from the left, we have our radial out and input. The radial is situated on top of this patch bay, and it's a rack-mounted DI box, direct injection box. That means that I can go and plug in my bass guitar and record the direct in from the radial here in the control room without using an actual direct box. So this is the input and this is the output. Right next to it, this is a section that refers to the master module of the SSL console. As a matter of fact, we have some recording send and return whenever we decide to record something into, let's say, our tape machine or into another recorder. We have our mix send and mix return. And this generally is the patch point situated on the master module of our SSL in case we want to insert on the finish line of our master module, let's say, another stereo bus compressor. So let's say we want to use a Neve 33609. Well, we know that a stereo bus compressor is surely going to be a stereo compressor. So what we're going to be doing is taking the output, mix, send, send it through our Neve 33609, take the output of the Neve, left and right. And now we have an extra set of compressors that is situated on our mix bus. Something even more important. Let's say you're working on a song and you're done recording the song and premixing that song or even mixing its song. The way you generally want to do with things is to bounce inside Pro Tools the overall blend and balance you have created through your analog board. So right next to it here, there is something called Mix Out. And Mix Out is the actual hardware output of the board. So once you're done recording something and you want to bounce a stereo version of your multitrack, here is what you want to do. You want to connect to Bantam to your Mix Out, create a brand new tracks in Pro Tools, and since we are bouncing whatever comes out of our SSL inside our Pro Tools session, we're going to go to where it says DAW input, and I generally choose the last two available inputs, 47 and 48. And you complete a normalization. Over here, we have our Ampex 2-track recorder. So every time we want to, let's say, bounce something to our tape recorder, this is exactly where we're going to go. So we're going to go again, mix out and send it into our tape recorder. 
this section over here is very important because it refers to our Q, A, B, and our four effects returns, which can be found on our SSL board. Now, Q, A, and B are automatically normaled with the patch bay. So, what you have to do is simply to engage the stereo QA from our board and that will feed automatically our Avium input. The Avium is the system that we use to send whatever is on our board to the headphones of an artist. But let's say we want to create different mixes, we could always break the normalization and send this elsewhere within the Avium network. Now here you have your Avium input and as we saw on the hardware piece the Avium allows you to send 16 discrete simultaneous channels and right next to here you have your effects return for your reverbs, your eventide and your lexicon reverb. We have a couple of molt point they would allow you to split the signal and take a copy of the signal and do pretty much whatever you want with it by sending it through the patch bay. The last two patch bay over here, still through or open, are featuring our monitor insert send and return in five surround, left, right, center, surround left, surround right, and um, LFE. This main LSA is still referring to the fullbacks that we have on our board. And then we have a couple of our effects outputs and return. Now the bottom patch here correspond again to our monitors and our Galileo which are the um, amplifier that controls our monitor system and over here on channel 30 on our patch number 6 is where we have our TB out, our talk bit out. So every time we need to talk to an artist on the other side of the screen or on the other side of the glass, here's what you want to do. You want to take your talk back, which is automatically patched from the talk back external B of your SSL, and send that in any of the mono available input of the Avium. So one, two, and three, and four are generally stereo sends. So if I were you, I would start from channel number six. And now you know that the talkback, every time you will press the talkback, it will be sent to channel number six onto the Avium. Lastly, this last patch features some Focusrite preamplifiers, Millennia Pre's, Neve 5024 Pre's, API 3124 Pre's, TG2, Grace Pre. We have a couple of Neve 33609, the DLC200, a Sontec, Manly Varibox, our couple of distressors, our Varimule compressor, our Ure 1176, our LA 2A, and then the input and output of our API 2500, plus the last external pre which is a Vintec 73i, which is a copy of a 1073. So right now that we have explained how patch bay works, you can understand that it's just a matter of getting comfortable in making connections. So let's draw a case history here. Let's say right now I am doing a recording and what I want to do is taking a signal from the microphone that I patched it in, let's say live room channel 20. I want to send this channel straight into channel 1 of my SSL board because maybe channel 20 corresponds to my kick drum and I like to have my kick drum as the first track of my SSL. So I'm going to break the normalization and send this to channel 1. First case. Let's say I'm tracking something for from the ADR room. ADR room, there it is. So I'm going to go on ADR, which is channel 53 or microphone input 53 on the tie line of the ADR room. So right now it's patched with or normal with SSL mic channel input 23, but maybe I want it elsewhere. So 
I can go in channel 6 and right now I am bringing this signal to channel 6. Let's draw another case history. Let's say I want to use another preamplifier. I'm in love with the sound of Neve 5024 on overheads for my drums. So I know that I'm going to have two microphones. So in this case, I'm going to use two patch bays. Let's assume I have plugged in my microphones into mic input 25 and 26. Two microphones, I'm working in stereo. So right now, instead of going to channel 13 and, 20 and 14, I can go and look for where my Neve is, right here. So my Neve 5024 allows me to have four inputs. I'm going to go with Neve channel 1 and channel 2. So right now my overheads are feeding the Neve. And this is the preamplifier that I will use in order to create a good balance and a good level for my recording. Then what is the last thing I have to do? Well, I have to take that signal back into my SSL. So the bottom row is always the input. The top row is always the output. Now, unfortunately here, we have had to accommodate for real estate reasons different outboard gear that will get to the studio in later moments. So my output of my Neve 5024 is actually over here. If you follow the color coding, you should be able to spot easily where everything is. So channel 1 and channel 2 are right now going to go back into my SSL. Let's say again, my overheads, I want them in channel 8 and 9. So I'm going to take my signal and go channel 8. I'm skipping one because again, we're not recording the track in stereo. So since the line input is always mono, right now here we have the line input in stereo in case we are mixing. And as I showed you in another video, we could flip each single channel of our SSL from mono to stereo. So channel 8 left and channel 9 left. So as you can see right now, I'm leaving one hole between the 8 and 9 because we generally have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9. So always remember when you go back into line input to first and foremost flip the line button on the console and then to go back actually to the line input because the volumes and the levels that you're going to be making are going to happen through your outboard gear. And this is it as far as using your patch bay. I hope this tutorial was helpful and that right now you can navigate a little bit more through this overwhelming way of connecting instruments and gear across the studio. Until the next one, ciao.